Ladies and gentlemen, this is the all-new Audi A3 and you're here with Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars, today with Thomas and Cornelius behind the camera. So we're going to take a detailed look on this all-new generation, exterior, interior and the driving experience and it has the approach. They try to be the best in segment. Is that true? Does it work? We're going to find out together in Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Please subscribe to us if you haven't done so far and also activate the notification bell and thank you so much for all our long-term subscribers. Here the Audi A3 in the new generation you can see here the front grille is bigger more impressive than before we have a honeycomb structure right there this is a so-called selection trim there are different trims available for example again also the sportier s line which then automatically comes with sport suspension and here the daytime running light also reacts so to say on the trim line so there are different leds here and here they are horizontal but in the s line for example they will show a vertical signature here this is one of the new like place they have there another led right there and also the main headlamp unit is standard from led but this one you know with the trim level play and then also the matrix led high beam function together with the dynamic light function this is only optional then in this matrix led unit it's of course really expensive then you also get this you know light play when you open and close the car and so on so base led yes but then all the extensive function all optional here in the lower part we can see a contrasting color and the main color for today here is manhattan gray 4 meter 34 14 foot 2 or 171 inches is the length of the all new a3 so the dimensions haven't changed much wheelbase the same as the all new Volkswagen Golf whereas the siblings Seat Leon and Skoda Octavia are a little bit longer in the wheelbase that's their new assortment then in this case 16 to 19 inch wheels these are 18 inch so still some of the good compromise of look and comfort 19 inch might be a little bit too stiff talking about stiffness there are different suspensions available the base suspension then a sport suspension that comes standard with the s-line 50 millimeters lower and then adaptive suspension which we also have today is an option 10 millimeters lower but the adaptive suspension of course reacts then on the surface and also can be put stiffer or softer than again the main design line is here above the door handles and they've done interesting things here where the design line stands out then goes in again and then forms the wheel arches if you want to know more about the design philosophy we also have the studio episode with brian where he talked to the designer exactly about that so you can tune into that later as well what do you think about design here so far different design lines available of course different colors different wheels but here the manhattan gray is actually a pretty elegant color what do you think now to the rear where we can see that the tail lamps are now more horizontal and then also with a modern signature inside when you have the optional matrix led you not only get the front cascading turning indicators but the same way also here in the rear that looks of course a little bit fancier then other than that a typical hatch style 35 tfsi is this 1.5 liter tfsi with 150 horsepower why do i mention that here now already well also has to do with the rear axle because you get a torsion beam for models that have less than 150 horsepower and a multi-link rear axle then for 150 horsepower included and more so what does it mean when you cannot refer to those terms 
It means then when you have a bigger engine, you get a more sophisticated rear axle that also reacts a little bit better and so on. It's the same with the VW Golf, by the way. There's no chance you can get the more sophisticated rear axle and suspension method with the one liter TFSI or with the smaller horsepower diesel, but then with 150 horsepower plus, you always get it. And by the way, here is this a fake exhaust graphic somewhat? I have a... Huh? <laughs> what would you say? I wouldn't say so. Um, just, you know, a contrasting graphic, I think that's totally fine that they didn't go for like a massive fake exhaust unit. The real exhaust then is right there underneath on the other side. And some color variation for you. This is Atoll Blue, so supposed to remind you of a South Sea Island, for example. Very beautiful, strong, bright blue color. That's what we call also Thomas Blue here in Auto Fuel. And together with the Turbo Blue, which is, you know, not exactly the same, but also a strong blue tone color. They have actually two Thomas Blue colors here in the new color lineup. This Atoll Blue here, by the way, is exclusive or new for the A3. No other model has that so far. Probably then will change later on that also other models will get it. What do you think? And another three-quarter rear perspective here for you. They can see how it looks in this color here from the rear. I think also fits the car very well. The hatch, of course, as usual for the European markets and of course, we can expect again that there will be a sedan then for the US market. And more variation for you. This car is first of all in Tango Red and it's also the S-Line exterior package. You can see here there are these Quattro citations here as an additional design element from this former traditional Quattro cars. Then also the front grille is a little shinier in this honeycomb structure and the lower bumper right there in the vehicle color. Next to the side elements, they are a little bit wider here. So overall a sportier stance. And now here with the S-Line exterior vehicle, you can see the vertical daytime running light in the LED. So the middle part is left out. Yeah, if that really someone recognizes that's the S-Line, you have to know that, of course. So a little bit playing around with the daytime running lights here. The S-Line also receives these contrasting dark spoiler inserts at the side. Then in this case, it's also an option. We also have darker rims here in dark gray, also interesting as a contrast. And the rear of the S-Line is different as well. First of all, we have this honeycomb structure right there. And here then also in the S-Line, yeah, fake exhaust graphics. Here we are again. What about engines? Well, unlike in the Golf 8 here in the Audi A3, you still get hydraulic struts. I think we can, you know, expect that somehow we even pay more money for that. So uh, today, a 1.5 liter TFSI turbo petrol engine, 150 horsepower, either with manual gearbox or optional with the DESG or s -tronic, they call it Audi, the dual clutch transmission. Then it is also connected to the MHEV system, mild hybrid 48 volt board net for sailing or coasting function and also for better stop start function and so on. A little bit more recuperation for battle fuel economy. We'll see about that today. Smaller petrol engine would be a one liter three cylinder turbo petrol engine with 110 horsepower. Then the diesel side is two liter TDI with 116 or 150 horsepower. The latter one also optional with all wheel drive. Then there will be a 130 horsepower TGI, so a CNG engine, compressed natural gas. And we also expect the plug-in hybrid the same as for the VW or the Seat and the Skoda, the 1.4 liter TFSI connected to with the electric motor as well, then a system output of 204 or 245 horsepower. So that's it so far. There will be more engines to come later, of course, and also again, the sports version S3 and so on.
This is the car key, elegant and light. Of course, keyless entry is available. Put your hand on the outside or on the inside and door closing sound. Yeah, that sounds very solid, very well done. Then inside of the doors, soft touch here in the front, an elegant line here that goes over to this handle from the inside, which is basically upside down. It's also an interesting idea. Also solid build quality here everywhere. There's a soft leather red and so on. And the buttons, they have clicking sound and a two level um, design, so to say, when you go all the way with them or just, you know, just a little bit. So really cool build quality here, as we know from Audi, and they step up the game here in this new generation. New steering wheel, right side for the volume, for example, and left side to control some of the digital instruments, zoom out of that. Then these air vents, they are completely new. They look a little bit attached on both positions, but from the driver's perspective, they are symmetrical. This is a very interesting aspect we can definitely discuss. So yeah, we'll see about that. What's your take on that? Then the seats, they are all new. They are a little bit lower in the vehicle now to give you a more sporty impression while driving. And these are also special fabric seats because they are from recycled materials. 45 PET bottles go into that one. So very sustainable, animal friendly, animal free. The outside then is also leather red, so not a real animal. So this is a cool design. You also get different design specs for this one. This in here with some you know, yellow nuances, but you can also get it in a different tone if that's not your preference. But really cool from the whole design. They are also a little bit sportier already. And again, a great idea. Audi is finally going sustainable, at least in the lower compact segments. It's different than, of course, for their big luxury vehicles so far. Well, let's get inside. Right here, of course, it's somewhat a typical compact hatch position. And when you put the seat all the way down, then you feel you're sitting a little bit lower and sporty in the car. We have here the optional electric seat right there. The motors also are good quality. They're also not too loud, actually. Usually I put them up a little bit that the position is a little bit more upright. You can put the front part here longer and the fabric here really feels very good. It gives you some, you know, ventilation, so to say, not active, of course, but because of this structure that you don't sweat on it in summer and it's robust at the same time. So very, very high quality as for that. Then the seating position here with the steering wheel, you can put it down, up, in and out. Has an interesting size as well. It's not too small actually. And when I put the seat all the way down, what about the head clearance? I'm one with 86 or six foot one, subscribers will know. And then there's plenty of headroom left here. And of course, even when I put the seat a little bit up. So definitely standard position, um, nothing super special, but the seats make a good impression here. They are a little bit sportier than in this trim already. So again, selection inside the trim and they give you a little bit more shoulder support here already. And now as comparison, the S-Line interior package. So, so far we had the design selection. Here then in the S-Line, you get the same sporty seat, the same geometry, same form, but then you get a stamped S logo right there and the Alcantara on the inside. So design selection was fabric on the inside and S-Line here, Alcantara on the inside. And on the outside, we still have the same high grade leatherette. Again, also animal free. That's also new because so far, when you picked Alcantara with Audi, you always got also real animal parts. Now also a more sustainable choice here for the S-Line, pretty cool. And the thing is fabric versus Alcantara. The fabric is a little bit cooler even than the Alcantara in summertime, whereas the Alcantara is maybe a little bit cozier in wintertime and maybe it looks and feels a little bit more premium. Mm, which one I would go for? Well, visual wise, I like the Alcantara, but for high temperatures in summer, I would actually prefer the fabric. Not a fan of the yellow fabric interior, although you can also get the base fabric seats if you don't um, go for any special design line. This one, of course, the most fancy styling, definitely. But cool to have, you know, plenty of interesting choices. And in this case, we also have this brighter deco element. It's a, let's say, aluminum style. Next to the S-Line steering wheel has this S badge and also the perforated sides. So a little sport here set up in here also for the S-Line. Test seating here in the Alcantara seat. Indeed, it's a little bit softer than the seat geometry was all the same for all the seats we've shown to you today, the optional sport seats. 
but here you know feels a little bit softer a little bit cozier that's cooler for winter times actually the fabric will be a little bit more durable and also more breathable so it's better for hot summer days so yeah would pick these for winter times and the fabric for um, the summer days even though they feel a little bit harder but that's again just a notch whatever you prefer visual wise and also comfort wise and maybe the climate you're driving the car in which one would you go for fabric in black fabric yellow or the alcantara here tell me in the comments and this is the s-line interior here with the black fabric seat and it also has the s sport seat so if you don't fancy the yellow setup for the fabric on the inside this is also more subtle so black and with a little bit of gray i think that's you know also a very elegant approach um, the fabric also feels a little bit different. It also has a recycling percentage, but the yellow fabric we've shown you has a higher recycling percentage. So that's the difference material-wise. It might be nitpicking, but from one of the most expensive compact vehicles on the market, I think we could expect also a dampened small cubby hole left next to the steering wheel. Can we? <laughs> what, what do you think? interior overview well wow this has been massively changed if you compare it to the predecessor and the thing is here again these vents they are like attached so to say it looks strange especially from the passenger side but here from the driver side it forms again this symmetry that looks actually quite fancy so it's depending on the perspective i think soft touch here at the top of the dashboard then the steering wheel again everything good quality for what you click and feel from the buttons and so on left side would start with all digital so no analog anymore but with the smaller 10.25 inch this is the optional 12.3 inch zoom mode to that on the right side is always the 10.1 inch screen always in the same size but the gps software for that is optional hmm yeah okay then you can also see soft touch right here then interesting insert there also again with nice high quality stuff everything and here the climate unit is still manual so to say so i can click to lower or pull to increase the temperature i like to have that still separately good that it didn't went into the screen or like with the new golf or so that you have to swipe somewhere still good to have these buttons and also again with the nice clicking sound same goes also for the seat heating and so on lower part for the drive select then one usb a device on the left usb c device on the right so they mix it around a little bit um, there's also an inductive charging pad underneath so you can use that because apple carplay is also available in wireless function and that carplay and android auto both with cable i usually do that because it charges faster then it's interesting here in this lower console start stop button then the passenger volume control as a driver you usually do that as a steering wheel but as a passenger you would do like like this you know there's like a touch field and then you roll on this touch field and then you change it um, the volume interesting new when you have dsg or astronic called it audi the dual clutch transmission there's a new shifting lever for that and it's shift by wire so there's no mechanical link the advantage is you have a nicer design very small and it also on a technological base it works faster to change between reverse and d and you cannot make any mistakes so i've tried it also you know when you really ease the car around in the parking lot and go from reverse to d it just goes fast so it indeed has a big advantage then first down in the middle console right here you have electric parking brake and then either this open cubby hole or you can make it to cup holders like this and then they're also adaptive at this side yeah, I think it's a nice idea to make this area a little bit more flexible. Then again, this high grade leatherette as for the armrest, very well attached. You can hardly shake it. And when you open it, you have some more space underneath. We have this optional 12.3 inch digital instrument and the base digital instrument is also standard already. This one here, even fancier. You have this whole view of the satellite map, for example, you can change the view in there. And also what you want to see in the middle part then, for example, also the fuel economy um, right there. So you can change a lot with that and it's a very crisp and clear view. So Audi among the best ones as for the virtual cockpit. And the head-up display, here's an interesting option. 
We've got a car with that one here so the current speed allowed speed and also some gps information if you have a route set and by the way the interesting thing it can be retrofitted when you buy so to say the base foundation for that that it's a gap in the front of that so a base model cannot be retrofitted but then you can so to say buy the standard retrofitting possibility for a head-up display that later on a later buyer or a second owner can also then add the head-up display that's also some new thing infotainment system this is the main view or we are touch i deactivated this click feedback so you can have it if you want but it's not really necessary this is then the apple carplay integration that also looks quite fancy and um, let's just listen to the music right here this is not the top sound system in build here but um, it's already quite decent from the sound so um, yeah even if you don't go for the highest spec it sounds good but of course the high spec will sound even better pretty cool so i like the integration of the carplay definitely right here then let's go back to the audi menu and what else can we show you of course the car internal gps here with a fancy satellite view yeah where we get, there we go at this dam right there so this is pretty amazing and the natural voice input not as sophisticated as with mercedes always bmw but for example good to use for the gps drive me to barcelona let's see Please now say additional search yeah, terms or select a line pick it, um, With the uh, Mercedes or BMW directly jumps Starting to it, for example, guidance. here, then you have to pick once more. And I could also use something like I'm cold, I'm warm or something, or set temperature to 23 degrees. That will also work in this car beginning August 2020. The same also goes for the wireless Apple CarPlay. Starts August 2020. If you order the car before, you will not get it and will probably not be able to upgrade it but then later orders will be able to have that. So yeah, strange strategy, but that's sometimes with such updates, you might expect nowadays you can just put a software update later on, but they told me it will not be possible. Most people, however, will all, uh, you know, will receive a car after August 2020 anyway, and then these features will be included. And the rear view camera together with these helping lines here, so you can basically aim for a parking spot. The blue then is you know, where the car actually be the orange one will be what you're aiming for so we can also align these lines here we go so a pretty helpful system definitely and then you can also fit it very well into the parking spot and this is about the sound system you get the bass sound system with six speakers optional audi sound system so it's called 10 speakers that's what we had so far 300 euros extra that's actually quite okay for an extra sound system and then switch cars now b and o sound system 15 speakers that is 800 euros extra and now includes also a 3d surround so there's an additional speaker in the front there that is basically mirroring the sound through the front glass to give you more 3d sound and the 10 speaker option audi sound system already sounded pretty good now let's compare the 3d b and o sound system wow yeah it's more you know more this room surround effect pretty cool so again the the audi sound system which is like an extra now 300 euros is okay for that extra from the german price list that was already pretty good so if you want good music but don't want to spend too much money but this one of course even sets the bar a little bit higher wow so both option sound system really top notch told you that 45 pet bottles went into the seats of the fabric version but in any a3 version of this new generation here the material below the floor mat and the floor mat itself is also from all pet bottles recyclables 62 together go into the front floor mat and the material below the rear floor mats and the cover below and also inside of the trunk this fabric covering all recycled materials way to go now to the rear we have the same sporty design with the sustainable fabric seats here in the rear pretty cool it forms kind of two single seats there we go and remember short wheelbase here for the golf and the audi a3 what does it mean in legroom well these are sportier seats they're also a little bit more voluminous and i mean that's always been the case recently for the a3 and the golf it hasn't changed in new generation it does directly fit for four tall adults not more not less you know see it directly fits when i sit behind my own seating position 
headroom is also fine. It's the same basically in, in the Golf and in the Octavia and in the Leon it will be you know a little bit better than asphalt legroom. But overall quite you know standard comfortable position here in the rear. We have the isofix on the outside of the seats here to install the child seats. We can already flip the seats from here. By the way the leather red is a very very high class material so no one could ever you know actually feel or see the difference that it's not from animal origin. The leather red grades are getting better and better. Here we do already flip the seats from here actually. Soon showing you the trunk. Then the middle armrest also with adaptive cup holders. That's really good that the kids don't spill anything. And the middle part here with two USB-C chargers in the lower part. I bet they're also extra. Gotta check the price list for that. <laughs> and then the last question is, can I also sit on the middle part because it's a little bit harder and a little bit more up? And well, it is somewhat possible. Oh, oof. yeah, Cornelius is also very tall. So <laughs> you see his length backwards a little bit. Yeah, it's yeah, hardly possible. It somehow works for short trips, but not really recommended. One thing on the interior wish list though, Rear door from the inside is hard pack. That could also be soft pack for that price. But at least you also get this cool handle here in the rear. Measurements and trunk capacity. 380 to 1200 liters. But what does it mean? Got a manual hatch here. There's a net optional available. Um, you can also deinstall it and then you can check it underneath that you can also put a replacement tire in there. There's enough space for that. So. And here we go, good square dimensions, not too high loading sill. I already flipped one of the seats actually, this is the sill. And what about the rest of the seats here? Interesting is that you can also put it here as a ski hatch, so just the middle part, that is possible. I'll soon flip everything, but first of all, some measurements, because here in length, this is 77 centimeters. In width, we are at about a meter, and under the cover right here is about 44 centimeters. And up to my driving seat, total length, here we go with just over one meter and 50. What about some luggage pieces? A standard cabin trolley also fits in a vertical way. Just as a proof, let me close that if that works. Yeah, that works. And just another backpack. That we can do as well and then when we flip the last seat this then would be the maximum setup one second also without luggage here we go and now this car has the electric hatch i can press the key twice for the hatch or here or i can also use this foot kick opening mechanism right there here we go and then tada we also have the full packed trunk for you and what about child safety yeah that's also fine so here we go by the way here with the blue car you can see here also in the lower trunk it looks like this and somewhat bluish of course not the you know, real finished paint but what I want to tell you here is this is also a car with a B&O sound system and you see no subwoofer the thing is it went into the side rear so even if you have the two sound system with subwoofers it stays empty here that you can still put a proper replacement tire in here and don't have the subwoofer blocking everything Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the all-new Audi A3 and we're driving in the 1.5 liter TSI 150 horsepower this will also be among the most relevant engines, the one probably most people will go for. We have the adaptive suspension inbuilt in this vehicle, so we can also switch it around with the drive select and it will have an effect on the dampening. At the moment we're in the auto mode, we also can go to the comfort mode to really see like what's the most comfortable setup. And indeed with the Volkswagen AG vehicles, so BW, Audi, Seat and so on, it does make a significant difference if you stick with the base suspension, which are also not bad, you know, they are already good. But when you then go for the adaptive suspension, you have really increased comfort. And at the same time, of course, you have this 
you know, this, this span. You can go from comfort to sporty just with, with hitting the button right there. So this is not a very special sporty Audi or something, not a sporty edition of the A3. Again, 1.5 TSI, adaptive suspension. And even here in the comfort mode, the car already feels quite sporty. When I'm here in the slalom, it's very good commands, you know, from the steering wheel. This is also the progressive steering, which is an option. Um, this is also a recommendable option because it increases driving life somehow. Um, on the one hand, on the sporty side, because it's very precise and direct, there's no dead zone in the degree angle. On the other hand, it's also good for parking in and out because you don't have to move the steering wheel all the way all the time. So I would really recommend to go for this very option. That's actually pretty cool. Here now, when we're behind the vehicle and 90 kilometers an hour, I can already set the adaptive cruise control right here with a separate column still below the steering wheel. So a lot of manufacturers tend to integrate it on the steering wheel now, here it's still with a separate stall column, then the distance is being kept. It works pretty flawlessly as well. Um, the blind spot monitor is also a very good option. It's inbuilt in this side mirror. Probably we can take a look at that uh, at the motorway very soon. I would also go for this one or maybe pick like an extensive assistance systems package just for safety. And the blind spot monitor now also works when standing still you know, cyclists, for example, approach. That's, of course, something that is very good improvement. So here, even in the comfort mode, good reaction from suspension. It's soft and sporty at the same time. And that's what, what's making it so good. Um, already we feel here at, at the speed we are at the moment that the noise insulation is really cool. Sierra Nevada, we can also see here in Spain, near Granada, as it says, <laughs> snow on the mountains. So now getting on the motorway and let's do an acceleration. For that, we can go to sports mode or dynamic mode. Here's then the blind spot monitor warning me that other vehicles are coming from behind. And now we go 60 kilometers to 120, let's go. Well, that's it. So, I mean, this was not like, you know, super powerful because we're not in the sports version, but definitely more than enough for this vehicle. For this motorway acceleration, I would say, for this car with a one liter TSI, with a three cylinder, not so sure about that. Maybe not. And the, another reason is, told, uh, told you about that earlier, when you go for the weak petrol engine, so below 150 horsepower, you also just have the torsion beam rear axle. So now here we have the multi-link rear axle um, suspension. So it is a better axle or suspension concept, uh, more individual, more reacts on the, on the surface, and is overall definitely way more comfortable. So what we have here now with the multi-link rear and the adaptive suspension, this combination is the most comfortable it can get in Audi A3, and we really feel that. So here on the motorway now at about 120 kilometers an hour, I'm now in the sports mode, so, so the adaptive suspension is set on a stiffer tone and it really feels so comfortable as we would be in an upper segment vehicle. So let's, let's go back to the comfort mode. Excavation figure officially, by the way, is 8.4 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And I'm not sure if you can pick it up on, on the camera, but it is really very silent in here, so it feels extremely refined. You would not guess that you are in a compact segment vehicle, more you would say like this at least mid-size, for example. Um, so if you would pick some random guys on the street and you know say like, oh we got the new A4 for you, just drive in it, you know, and then just open your eyes when you sit inside, don't look behind you, everyone's like yeah, of course, it could be the new A4. So and I think that really speaks for the car. Um, by the way, these seats here with the special fabric surface with the recycled PET bottles, not only um, are they sustainable, but they're also quite comfortable here from the first impressions. Um, and also they, you know, they have this structure that gives you some air, you know, so you don't stick to the seat. That's especially important when it's a little bit hotter like it is today, 24 
degrees Celsius. So very refined ride, very comfortable, really silent, and that makes this also a good um, motorway vehicle. You know, what about comparison with the all new Volkswagen Golf? Of course, they come close, they use the same platform. They too have the same wheelbase. Remember, Golf and A3, the new generation, share the same wheelbase. And now Seat Leon and Skoda Octavia share the increased wheelbase. They're all four somewhat similar, yes. But indeed, the wheelbase is the difference. So the A3 and the Golf are, so to say, the sportier versions with a little bit less legroom in the rear. Um, therefore, maybe like a little bit more fun in driving and so on. Uh, but so far, I mean, we can just say that that's really superb. Um, haven't experienced any any better in a compact segment vehicle yet. So that's that's, that's really amazing. Now let me set the adaptive cruise control once again here with the separate column again. Um, I mean, it's not it's not too bad to have it right here. I mean, why not? And you know, the distance to the car is being kept once again. So what about the lane keeping assist you can activate it here with the active lane keeping assist left side next to the steering wheel with lane keeping or without lane keeping and let's see what the car is being doing so first of all now I'm doing absolutely nothing first of all speed is being reduced behind this truck and let's see I'm not steering at all at the moment of course you're supposed to keep your hands on the steering wheel um, but I'm not you know, really interacting with the steering wheel at the moment. Just keep, there's the blind spot monitor now. You can see, very good, this integration. And here now, I'm not steering, so the car is doing that. And you see the lane is being kept pretty efficiently and also really centralized in the lane and also very smooth. So I don't really, you know, feel that the car would be interfering too much or something. So this is a very relaxing feature, definitely, for long motorway rides. Why not? There again, blind spot monitor, and if I hit the turning indicator, then it's also flashing for just an additional warning. So let's overtake right here, kick down, the car does that itself. You can also just go, you know, you can stick in the comfortable suspension setup, but then you can go to the S shifting mode, then the gears are turned up higher, um, later shifting up, earlier shifting down, that is also possible. And that's just easily done with this new DSG shifting lever or S-Tronic, how they call the dual clutch transmission at Audi, DSG at Volkswagen. It's actually quite easily, it's actually faster than uh, with the old system. Everything shift by wire now, so all electronic commands. If you have this la active lane keeping um, assist on, of course the steering when you take it over yourself feels a little bit like dead and wobbly. Um, that's just normal because the car is steering. So you can either, let's say, okay, I just relax a little bit, let the car do the steering more or less for me. Or if you say, you know, this is a fun motorway now, I want to enjoy this curving road, curvy road myself, then again, I can activate this active lane keep, deactivate this active lane, deactivate the active lane keeping. <laughs> uh, and then I don't have this interfering, interfering of the steering wheel anymore and I can more enjoy steering myself. So, and it's really good that you can deactivate it here pretty easily. I don't have to go like in the menu deep there, right there, or like behind the steering wheel. This is a good solution where I'm not distracted also to change it up, you know, back and forth while driving. So I think everything well oriented while driving, the drive select is put a little bit, you know, below there. But the question is how often will you change it? Um, you could also leave it just in the auto mode all the time and then the car is doing that for you. Um, and again, it's a little bit sporty, stiffier in the dynamic mode, but it's not uncomfortable then. And also in the comfort mode, it's not, you know, that you would say you miss sportiness. So you can also just leave it in the uh, automatic mode and then that's it. What is also cool that we can still control the AC unit with a separate button while driving. I like to have that as well, and not only to be able to do that in the screen. So overall, the setup they found here, also with the digital cockpit, I think is very good that it's not too distracting. You get all information you need while driving. I think they really found an impressive setup here, overall. Um, 
we did criticize in the interior part a little bit before that the air vents look a little bit attached but when you sit here now and drive the vehicle you have this driver centered or focused view and then it's somehow like it's cool to have this you know symmetric view just in front of you so i wouldn't mind it at all although in the interior part while just looking at it let's say dry it looked a little bit strange um, you know, once again so yeah i can just stress here from motorway driving and you know i i plan also to in increase motorway driving parts um, um, because that's what a lot of people do actually with the car you can test the assist assistance systems very well you can test some you know acceleration and speed and so on and of course also noise insulation at higher speeds now we're getting 120 kilometers an hour that's well, like 70 miles something um, pretty impressed by this car and just by these driving features we mentioned right here I think it surely is among the top in the segment so what about fuel economy and I mean we have a lot of rolling here cruise control we have one harsh acceleration and at the moment we are at six liters on one kilometers and considering we have this acceleration in there I think that's absolutely fine um, we'll also drive a longer way now so at the end of our review we can keep you up there then with the final liter consumption figure when we have you know a lot of different mix inside there and of course also then give you the MPG figures but so far it looks quite efficient MF system here you can see it are not going downhill then the RPMs I'm not sure if you could see it on the camera right there of the steering wheel was blocking the RPMs drop to zero so this MF system is basically shutting off the engine then rolling just sailing saving fuel also when you when you're on the brakes or so giving so you some recuperation for this um, for this battery that's you know what what the mf system does and of course in the city also helping with the stop start function and so on so pretty impressed here what do you think and also some b roads well um c roads or d roads <laughs> so very small rural roads to give you some more of the agility steering and so on also to challenge the suspension a little bit more Let's see which mode are we in we're in the auto mode let's go to comfort mode to see maximum comfort here i'm really slow now to scratch anything from the ground you know the adaptive suspension is 10 millimeters lower than the base suspension sport suspension would be 50 millimeters lower than the base suspension and so far even if there's some uneven road parts right there again a good job and all the roads we're driving on today are pretty rough in the asphalt so um, that also stressed again the noise insulation and so on here a lot of beautiful olive trees and driving also longer way now so um, fuel consumption was confirmed with sex uh, you got that six liters on more kilometers so it's about um 39 mpg us and 47 mpg uk which is really decent here for the compact segment so that's actually very good so this mf system seems to work indeed for this new setup right here and you can also take a look here at the steering wheel pretty easy to control i don't have to steer that much and again really precise so that's again good for sporty driving and also for parking in and out and so on so um, feeling as comfortable as we were on the motorway this also then um, advantage of the compact vehicle because it's not too big in dimensions of the short wheelbase if you compare it to the Leon on the and the Octavia I mean at the end of the day it might not be the biggest difference you could feel but definitely helps here to have a shorter wheelbase no doubt about that very beautiful this landscape right here so I hope you enjoy the driving commentary also with a look to the front right there and again about the fuel economy so we're driving with AC on all the time that's sometimes also oh, potholes here sometimes um, you know that can also have a really significant fuel economy effect so if it's really really hot outside and you have the AC fully on it can even up to be a, a liter or more kilometers depending on the vehicle of course so just to take that in mind that even more stress that the engine is actually 
quite efficient. The turbo petrol engines meanwhile also have a particle filter. Of course, all the turbo petrol engines need to, at least in the EU, they have need to have that. Um, sometimes different than to the US versions, for example. This then here, the hatch, there will also again be an A3 sedan, of course, so they won't change that in the lineup. So having a lot of fun here also with the winding roads. This is a pothole and of course this was not possible to even that out from suspension totally, but didn't get through our, our lower back or something, so also this was mastered quite well. So the more we drive the car, the more we see this is really top notch in the compact segment. Mm, thinking about the other top competitors, when it's like BMW 1 Series or the Mercedes A-Class. Yeah, as we told you in the um, interior review, the voice recognition system is definitely better with Mercedes and also with BMW. Um, the BMW is a little bit more fun to drive, I would say. It has a more, let's say, engaging, natural driving experience. This one is also pretty agile to drive, definitely. Um, with the A-Class, um, you only get the sporty ride if you have the AMG models. Then again, it's really stiff. So I think the Audi here delivers you a better compromise between sportiness and comfort. Um, yeah, I think these are the, the, the main difference, so to say. They're all, of course, close. And then you also have to think about the non-premium competitors. Um, just think about the Kia Seat, for example. Um, I have the Kia X seat, of course, at the test week at the moment, showed you that review um, earlier. And it's also a very good car and it's significantly cheaper. So you always have to think about, we have some features here which are even better than in the non-premium competitors, yes. I mean, a lot more fancy stuff and something even more refined and more features and so on. But then you do pay the rabbits here, yeah. Um, you do pay about 10 to 15k at least more than. So um, I don't have the exact price of this vehicle, but we calculate a little bit like all the options we have in here, and um, this can e easily be like 45, 50k. Um, so and oh, we have to pay attention to the animals here on the road. So and then the question is, of course, is it really worth it? So yes, also driving part proves. This is really top-notch in the compact segment, uh, among the best. But is it 10 or 15K or something more worth than, let's say, a Kia Seat or even the, a Volkswagen Golf, we were a little bit cheaper? Well, I think we have to go straight. No, I think we, no, I think we go straight. Yeah. We go to a secret location yeah. now. Um, yeah, I think you have to decide it on your own. Um, that's something so. So many things, very well done about this car. But with, as we all, with a lot of Audis, yeah, the price. <laughs> Well, and now to our conclusion for today with the all-new Audi A3. First of all, on the exterior, it's more an evolution than a revolution. Not so much has been done. The basic dimensions stay the same. Of course, it's a little bit more dramatic with the new design lines they put in. The interior has completely changed, all digitalized now, and optional, of course, even fancier. Sadly, not everything is from standard equipment, but we know that from Audi. But the build quality is really top-notch awesome that they're finally on the path now to even more sustainable seating materials, animal friendly and sustainable, even more recycled materials. So they're on a very good path there too. Also good in comfort and everything makes sense also while driving to control everything. Although a lot is touch based, a lot of important functions you're using while driving, you can still control with manual buttons. And I think that's also very important. Driving wise, it is indeed among top in the segment as well. It is a very good compromise between sportiness and comfort, especially here with the adaptive suspension. It's great to steer with this progressive steering. Yeah, that's the scheme. Adaptive suspension and both the progressive steering are optional. Yeah, <laughs> that's the scheme about this car. So, so many different things are really top notch in the segment overall, but are also very, very expensive. That's the story of this car. You get it when you are 
you know, able or want to spend the money on one of the best in the segment. I said earlier in this driving review, I had a little bit more fun driving in the new BMW 1 series actually. And the Mercedes A-Class, for example, has the better voice input system. But this one is also a very good overall package. And especially, you know, this compromise between sportiness and comfort, that's what they really master right here. So overall, I think if it's the overall best in the segment, that's also always personal preference, definitely. But among the best, definitely, they are all, you know, somewhat different. Yes, question then is if it's like worth 10 or 15 or 20k more than, for example, a Kia Seat or even more expensive than the Volkswagen Golf. But what we've seen here today is really, really impressive and they improved this A3 in every tiny aspect. Even the fuel economy with about six liters or more kilometers for this 1.5 TSI with the MF system, about 39 MPG US, 47 MPG UK, also quite good. So even that aspect, a little bit better than so far. Yeah, hardly anything to criticize, but the price, I think, you know, that's what it comes down to. Would like to hear your comments. Please join us in discussion here of the A3 and please also tune into the competitive reviews. Mercedes A-Class, then of course the BMW 1 series, all in the new generation. And maybe also the ones of the non-premium segment previously shown to you, like the said Kia Seat or then the Volkswagen Golf, which comes closest to this one here. Remember, Volkswagen Golf and this one A3, same wheelbase, same platform, and then the other siblings same platform but a little bit longer in the wheelbase so the lengthened platform for the Seat Leon and the Skoda Octavia which you can also soon see here at Autogefühl of course or maybe if you watched it review at a later stage then they're all really linked below. Thank you so much for tuning in today it's been a pleasure for us Cornelius behind the camera Thomas in front of the camera thank you so much for tuning in see you next time